go get him again. Welcome to the Robes Away channel. I'm your host, Mark. If you're new here and you just subscribed on this video, please comment below, let yourself known uh, to me. I, I'd love to meet um, new subscribers on the channel and in which video uh, they subscribed on. If you are a returnee, welcome back. Um, we are gonna be speaking about the brand of Zerzhoff, another hype train. Um, if you're new to the fragrance community within YouTube, you'll know that Zerzhoff gets talked about a lot in our community. It doesn't mean they're a premier brand. Far from it, sorry, not sorry. Um, free bottles do this, fake hype. Fake hype on YouTube. Oh, every single new release is one of the best in the game. Oh, mind blown, no, no, no. They use certain influencers, give them free bottles, and then you see several videos pop up of the brand of Zerzhoff with their new release, and it's the next best thing. Be very much wary of brands like this. Now, I'm not saying that Zerzhoff is the worst in the world, but they are far from the best in the game. Um, you gotta be careful with this fake type of hype on YouTube. I love to say that on every brand that does this. PDM, I'm looking at you. Initio, I'm looking at you, among others, with your free hype, um, which isn't so free, I guess, free bottles. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Let's talk about one that has been hyped on the YouTube platform. Um, this is not a new re release, not even close, uh, but this is Cruise Del Sur 2 by Zerzhoff. Now this one is part of their Shooting Stars collection and I'm an early Shooting Stars guy. Like my bottles are square. They're not, they don't look like these new bottles that they have. Um, I bought Neo, Udin, and Kobe. Um, I started my Zerzhoff collection with those three. Um, fairly solid releases out of all of them. Uh, but this one right here, tons of hype within the community and I want to sniff it and see what I get, especially coming into the spring summer months because this is what this thing is all about. It's a fruity fragrance from what I hear. Now let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this one. Release date was back in 2017. Concentrations Eau de Parfum. Major notes to my nose are mango, um, apple blossom, which is fairly rare note, especially I would have to say in the male aisle. I don't think I've seen one before. Um, a lot of unisex female fragrances do have the note of apple blossom and milk. So it has a lactonic background to this release. And when we're gonna get to that, let's start sniffing. Now, if you clicked on this review, hoping that I'd say a mango lactonic fragrance, you'll be at 75, 80% right, bang on, on the button. Um, we could end the review today, right now, right now. There's, uh, and, but that's no fun. You know, we don't, we don't copy paste what Fragrantica users say and put it in our YouTube channel. So let's peel some layers here and see what we get. I got my little Lucky Scent sample that I've been wearing. So I apologize, I was uh, required or needed while I was dab dabbing. Um, so we, we are going to uh, finish this little sample off of Cruz del Sur 2. It is my scent of the day today, so I am actually wearing it, but I wanted to remind me of this introduction. It's a nice tropical, um, uplifting introduction. Now the opening of Cruz del Sur 2 is basically a fruit medley. Exotic, yeah. Um, tropical, yeah, yeah, definitely. The fruits take center stage here for a little bit until there's a lactonic wave and you can kind of sense that lactonic wave coming through, but they really want um, to amplify this fruitiness in this introduction and give it the spotlight that it deserves because it's actually really, really good. Now let's peel the layers of this fruity aspect. Now, mango and guava are the ones that a lot of noses say are the main culprits in this particular release, and they are the main players. If I close my eyes, this smells like a photorealistic mango note to me personally. Uh, it, I can smell the fruit, but also the fleshy tones in this release here. It, it's quite good. If you're searching for a solid mango release, this has to be a top of your list, at least top five. Um, this might be up there now. Lactonic sense is another thing. Um, a lot of noses dislike lactonic sense. So there's guava in here um, as well. I feel it's more of a second in command. 
but it can be primary for some noses. I can see that depending on your your nose. Um, I feel like both the mango and the guava play well together in the sandbox and they almost morph into one fruity note. Now there's some mild acidity here, not from citruses, but from the pineapple. It's a little cheesy, but very hard to find if you don't put your nose through your skin. It just helps the whole fruity aspect, to be quite honest. Another note I sense here is black currant. I don't think it's in the official notes. I might be wrong, but it's a berry like quality in the background, a little bit of that greenness. Very nice and giving that, that mango fruit heel, um, skin, just that, all of that is absolutely gorgeous in this opening. Now the one note I feel is lacking in fragrance reviews of this particular release, and I know why, because um, Zerzhov just published like I think just like, just floral, floral notes, that's it. Um, so a lot of reviews, you know, if you don't have that experience, um, you'll miss what the floral notes are. Uh, for me personally, there's a peachy vibe here up top with the, the fruit, and that's where it makes me think a little bit of an apricot. And even though the note isn't listed, I think there's a good chance there's some osmanthus in here, giving its familiar creamy white floral peachy nuance and hints of violet. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of osmanthus-like qualities in this particular release. Osmanthus isn't an official note, but if you're looking at who's the culprit for this milky lactonic nuance, perhaps don't look much further than the Osmanthus note. Now pairing that floral with the apple blossom, which apple blossom gives a familiar honeysuckle vibe with a mild apple note, is definitely there in the introduction, throws itself more into the mid, giving the fragrance a very good balance. This opening has a true blue tropical fruit punch that everyone is talking about with a full on white floral lactonic edge. The lactonic quality is very white, obviously, and at times it makes me think of orchids. Now I'm starting to think of like different type of florals and a white orchid really goes well with the, this Zerzhov release. Colors in this opening, green, orange, there's some pinks in here, some yellows, lots of white. At this point, the florals and the fruits melt together, make themselves into a mango, you can go either way, milkshake, uh, ice cream, whatever, but I feel like it's more of a mango sorbet. It feels like it's a little whipped, a little milky, but it has some depth to me. It's like a sorbet, cold, iced quality, quality here. Absolutely beautiful. That mango note, even now, um, is just beaming off my skin. Very, very photorealistic, photo beautiful, beautiful note. Into the mid and the deeper dry down of Cruz del Sur 2, the scent is quite linear. So once the florals introduce themselves in the introduction, which really didn't take too long, you won't be adding much to this particular scent. So if you don't like the introduction and you don't like the first half hour, probably your SOL. Um, I sent some green aspects here being added, almost like a leafy quality. Some vetiver gets thrown in, but isn't too rooty. Some mild woods that smell very generic, woody backdrop type of backbone. They're not major players, but they do play a part in this fragrance. It's gourmand, yes but towards the end it pulls itself a little off that gourmand quality because of the introduction of the woods and the vetiver here, um, but it still remains that a lactonic gourmand fruity fragrance. Um, there's some musk uh, to end everything, and oh, um, the note of orchid really came through to me, and again, that's a note that I'm saying is in this fragrance, doesn't mean it's in it, um, but I feel a, just a really, an orchid-like note here, and it plays a bigger role here, and it goes almost a little vanillic, which of course orchids do. Um, overall, Cruz del Sur 2 deserves the hype it receives, in my personal opinion. It won't be for everyone, honestly, no. Um, especially the lactonic quality. Lactonic scents, honestly, are for a select few of us in the fragrance game. The mango itself is on par with some of the best I've smelled, including mango skin that I rave about. I think mango skin is more about mango than in here, as this one is more, more, much more complex up top. There's more moving parts, 
both are not overly complex. Like don't, don't, uh, <laughs> don't confuse that. But fun, they're fun fragrances all together, but I think the mango skin one is much thinner. Um, it makes it more juicier, a little more summer-esque, like summer day, hot summer day, I would wear a mango skin. This has a little more, dare I say, a little more depth to it. I feel like this is more for more of a cooler day. Um, I think this one has a place in people's rotation and as much as people want to say summer, summer, summer about this one, I, mean, I think it has some of that depth here that can extend its life more into the spring. And I mean, early spring, late spring, doesn't matter, especially the floral qualities in here, the lactonic qualities would work really well in the spring and early fall. Actually. Now let's get into seasons, day, night, versatility and performance. Seasons, again, I just hit it up. Spring, I feel is the, the best season for this release, at least. In these wearings, I felt like that was the best, but a cool summer night, ooh, perfect, that would be great. Um, you can wear it in the heat, but I'd be a little careful, and fall. Um, I feel like just enough uh, of coolness will make this fragrance really well on your skin. Day or night, I feel like this is more of a fun daytime scent. I could wear this, I could see some people wearing this at night, like a, you know, cool summer night. Um, you're going to the club or something. This is, might be a good one for you, but that, again, we'll get into performance because that might not be very good in the club. Uh, versatility, fairly average. Um, I, 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 these fun fragrances, um, I, I feel like you can dress them up, dress them down, doesn't really matter. Fairly average. Performance. Um, now, I got a little gripe with the performance. Um, nothing wrong with the longevity. Seven to nine hours on my skin, every single wearing. Um, again, it was a couple wearings, but it was really good. But the projection was below average. Not sure what the issue is here, but this one in regard to projection, never really projected. I mean, it just is a skin scent. Now, the first day I wore it, I did get somebody in a car sitting beside me getting a little wafts of it. But other than that, second wearing, zero, nothing. Nobody could smell me. Um, so again, it might be one of those that you have to spray heavy. Unfortunately, with a little Lucky Scent sample, you can't really do that. Now, at the end of the day, Cruz del Sur 2. Is it hype worthy? Kind of. Um, it, it does go against the mango skins of the world. Is it one of the best uh, mangoes in the game? Top five, top 10? I can see it. Um, I absolutely love the fruit in here. Um, it's a fragrance not to be taken too seriously. Um, as a fragrance head, this is a fun fruity scent. That's all it is. Um, it goes against some of the best in class. That I can say, it's one of the better mangoes that I've smelled. Again, I don't have too many mango based scents in my collection. I need to amp up my mango collection. But because of this, um, I feel like because um, my initial impression of it was pretty good, this is bottle worthy for me. I, it's not a showstopper for me. Fake hype, maybe, but I'm high on this, this release. I really do uh, want to get a bottle of it, overspray it, see how it does in the spring and summer months. So now if I have to give it a score, because I have to give it a score on sampling samples out of 10, it would be a strong nine bottles out of 10. I mean, definitely isn't for everybody. I could see the lactonic quality not being for everyone, but a very solid release from the House of Zerzhov. I feel like, you know, Maybe I'm a little too hard on them, but I feel like this is a solid, solid release. Now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. Good or bad, doesn't matter. Uh, please let us know what you think about Cruz del Sur 2. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your mango-based fragrance wisely. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Have a good one.